So this talk is about masking the GLP lattice-based signature scheme at any order. And it's a paper by Gilles Bart, Sonia Belaïd, Thomas Esposito, Pierre-Alain Fouque, Benjamin Grégoire, Melissa Rossi, and Medici Bucci. And Melissa is giving the talk. Hi, thank you for the introduction. So I'm Melissa. I'm going to present a work on masking. We decided to study how to mask a post-quantum signature scheme. So why masking a post-quantum signature? There have been numerous uh, side channel attacks against lattice-based schemes today because they use new features like Gaussian distributions or rejection sampling. And th those two features uh, are threatened by, for example, uh, cache attacks, timing attacks, and uh, differential power analysis attacks. And those attacks can be uh, really, can recover the secret uh, easily. For example, uh, in AES, those kind of attack can recover the secret in minutes or even in seconds, so this, those attacks are very powerful. And uh, for now, since those features are quite new, there are few countermeasures for now, and especially on signatures, because of those new features. So uh, there is, since there is a call for concrete implementation, uh, as you know with the NIST competition, uh, those six schemes could be eventually used in industry, and so uh, this, um, this calls uh, strong countermeasures because, uh, for example, they can be uh, used in smart cards or in, um, or in uh, Internet of Things, and so this could be threatened by those kind of attacks. So that is why we decided to mask a post-quantum scheme. So I'll briefly explain how masking works uh, for the people who don't know how. Uh, so masking uh, is a countermeasure against a certain type of uh, attacker model. So for a classical attacker model, the attacker used the inputs and the return value of the algorithm. But in uh, masking, it protects against another kind of uh, attacker model, which is called Ishai, Sai, and Wagner model, which has been introduced in 2003. Uh, so it's a very powerful attacker model where the attacker gets access to the input value, the return value, but also he can pick some values inside the algorithm, so intermediate values. Those values are called probes, um, so it's also called a probing model. And so uh, it's really proof friendly because uh, we get the ex exact values, the exact intermediate values, but it's not a really realistic model. There's another realistic model which is called the noise noisy leakage model. And uh, it's a model where the attacker gets the input, the, the, uh, the return value, but also he gets uh, information, noisy information about intermediate values. Uh, so he can get that with uh, measuring the power consumption, measuring the electromagnetic waves around the chip which is running the algorithm. So this is a more realistic model, but it's hard to make proofs in this model. So uh, what is done is that we prove the security in the uh, ISW model and there are reduction. So if it's secure in the ISW model, then it's secure up to a certain level of noise in the noisy leakage model. So we proved the security of a post-quantum signature scheme in the ISW model. So masking is a countermeasure which uh, is securing a scheme against uh, the IS, uh, an ISW attacker. So it's uh, at an order D, and each sensitive value is replaced by D plus one shares. And the idea is, is it is impossible to recover the value without having, um, without having all the shares. So it's a secret sharing. And then any strict subset of at most D shares in, in, is independent from the, secret, the sensitive value. So each sensitive value must be shared into D plus one shares inside the algorithm. So we can see that it can be really costly in terms of performances. Uh, so in this paper, we, we provided the first provable mass implementation of a lattice-based uh, signature scheme. And this at any order, it means that we take D as a parameter. And so for that, we introduced new techniques for masking lattice-based fiat shamir with the signatures. Uh, which is quite new because the masking schemes uh, were mostly targeting um, sign um, sim symmetric cryptography and so the fact that those algorithms are probabilistic is, uh, was a challenge for this work. 
uh, there are also, we provide also new proofs uh, for masking probabilistic algorithm. So, uh, I'll pre first present uh, the signature, why did we choose GLP? And then I'll present the countermeasure and its proof. And finally, I'll present the performances because we provided a uh, proof of concept uh, where it's an implementation of GLP mask up to an order D. So uh, the GLP signature scheme has been introduced uh, by Gunesiu, Lyubashevsky, and Popelman in 2012 uh, in chess. It's the ancestor of Bliss and the lithium. The lithium is a candidate for the NIST competition and it has no Gaussians, only uniform distributions. So masking Gaussian can be a challenge because um, masking uh, uh, the sum of discrete Gaussian is not a discrete Gaussian. So for a first masking, for a first step, uh, targeting a scheme which use only uniform distribution was, uh, was a good idea. So we just targeted this uh, that use only uniform distributions. But still, there were some difficulties that uh, didn't appear before. Uh, this scheme is a probabilistic algorithm, and also it relies on rejection sampling, which is a new feature. So uh, it was, um, we had to introduce new techniques for that. So now uh, I'll present briefly uh, how GLP works. Uh, so here is the key derivation. It uses this ring, uh, Zp of x uh, modulo x uh, to the n plus 1. And there is also another uh, RK here, which is uh, the ring R with the coefficients in minus KK. So it's uh, R with uh, co small coefficients, with uh, elements with small coefficients. So the key derivation is re really easy. Uh, it has five steps. So the first step is to derive the secret S1 and S2, uh, which have small coefficients. So they are in R1. They are coefficient in minus 1, 0, 1. And then we derive A, which is in the big ring R, so it's a public value. And so uh, we derive T, which is A S1 plus S2. And finally, the secret key is S1, S2, and the public key is A T. So we can see that uh, this algorithm is based on the ring LWE-like problem, because if we have A T, uh, and if you want to distinguishing, distinguish it from random, uh, we have to to uh, see if t is equal to as1 plus s2. But actually, uh, s1 and s2 have uh, different, um, different distribution, and uh, it's a ring LW problem where we have only one sample. So this problem has been renamed in the original paper as a decisional compact knapsack problem. So now the signature. It's a fiat Shamir with a board signature. So it's, um, it's an adaptation of a fiat Shamir uh, identification protocol which has uh, commitment and challenge. So uh, it has also six steps. The first step is to generate random, so y1 and y2, which are in rk, where k is uh, 2 to the 14. Uh, 14. Uh, and so there is a commitment value which is computed, which is r equal to uh, a y1 plus y2. And this commitment is, um, is hashed to a challenge uh, c. And then z1 and z2 are computed as uh, S1C plus Y1 and S2C plus Y2. And since the distribution of y, uh, Z1 and Z2 uh, can leak the secret because it depends on S1 and S2, uh, the idea is to use rejection sampling, so to, uh, to check that the distribution would not leak the secret. So uh, all Z1 and Z2 that are uh, too big are rejected and the signature is, start, is restarted. Uh, with uh, GLP parameters, um, the, the, the number of attempts before going, getting a right signature was around seven. And so finally, the signature is Z1, Z2, and C. Uh, to check if this signature is correct, uh, we, we just uh, compute the commitment, so by getting AZ1 plus Z2 minus TC, and check if, it's, uh, if it fits with the, with the challenge C. So this was uh, the algorithm. But now how to mask this? So uh, we use a technique which is uh, quite general, which has three steps. So first, we choose which algorithm are using the secrets to mask them. Uh, for, for example, here the verif verification does not use the secrets, so we didn't mask it. So the signature and key derivation need needed to be masked. So they are first divided into blocks that are called gadgets. 
and then its block is uh, studied individually to, uh, and we prove one security property with each block. So we use several uh, properties. So first unmask for uh, non-sensitive parts. Then non-interference. So it's um, non-trivial to understand a uh, property. Uh, so we take every set, we prove that every step of at, every set of at most d intermediate value can be simulated with at most d shares of the input. This security property is a little bit stronger than the property uh, that the, the security in the ISW model, but this is uh, this is needed for proving the security of the whole scheme and to compose the security. And so for this um, this setting, we had to introduce a new security property, which is called non-interferent with public outputs. So we select um, output, which are uh, intermediate values, and we give it for free to the attacker. So it's, uh, we prove that every, st every set of at most d intermediate values can be perfectly simulated with the public outputs and at most d shares of each input. So it's like giving some values that are called output, output to the attacker but we also prove that um, the countermeasure do does not leak more than the output and uh, that uh, the output does not leak anything about the secret. And finally, there is a composition proof which uses all the securities property together and, and prove that this, the whole scheme is secure. So this was the method to prove, uh, to prove the security in the ISW model. So for the masking, the key derivation, uh, so first let's divide it in, div into blocks. So for generating the secret S1, S2, we introduced a block which is called data generation, uh, which outputs the number of trials before getting a correct masking. And then it outputs the masking of S1 and S2 in mask form, and actually in arithmetical mask form. So the sum of each shares mod Q, mod P is equal to uh, the secret. So this is for generating the secret. For generating A, since it's a public value, it's generated uh, uh, not masked. And then uh, we use an arithmetical step to compute uh, T. And so it computes T in mask, value, in ma in mask form. So the secret is outputted uh, as ma in mass form as being S1 and S2. And uh, since T is a public value, it needs to be unmasked. So we use um, a block which is called full, full add, uh, which is uh, uh, refreshing, refreshing the mask and adding all them together. And then uh, it outputs T, which is the public value. And so we have the, secret, the public key, which is AT, which is uh, unmasked. So here is the block form of uh, Key the key derivation. And so we studied each block separately to prove the security. And, and so uh, we proved that H1, H1 and full add are non-interference. And uh, that data generation is uh, non-interference with public output trials. And so with those security, we proved that the key derivation is uh, secure in the ISW model. For the signature, it was a little bit harder because uh, there were a problem with the, um, with the commitment value, which is R, which is equal to AY1 plus Y2. The problem is that um, we did not want to mask uh, the hashing function because it would have been terrible for performances. Um, and uh, if we see the, the signature as an identification protocol, uh, we don't see why uh, R should be secret. So actually, we proved that masking the commitment was unnecessary and it, that it could be an output. So uh, we proved by proving that uh, distinguishing RC pairs from uniform is a hard problem, even for rejecting these ex executions. For the final execution, we can see that we can recover uh, C and R, so they're not uh, sensitive. But for the rejected execution, it, it wasn't trivial to prove. So to prove the security of uh, GLP sign, we did the same. We uh, divided it into blocks. So first, uh, we used the same blocks as for the key derivation, so data generation, which outputs uh, Y1 and Y2 in mask form. Then we compute the same uh, arithmetical uh, block to, to get the commitment R. 
And since uh, we com R was proved not uh, sensitive, we unmask it with the full add block. And then we hash it with the message to get the commitment, the, um, the challenge. And then with, the, with this, we can compute Z1 and Z2. So with uh, using uh, Y1 and Y2 in mass form. And after, there is a step which is the rejection sampling, which was a little bit uh, complicated. So here is the rejection sampling step, which output the, the signature. So uh, here is a, uh, so GLP sign in, in block forms. So we studied each block separately to prove the security. Here is uh, the security of all the blocks. So uh, the green ones are non-interferent, and we can see that the hash function is not masked because we proved that uh, R is not uh, sensitive. And so we also had to prove that uh, the full add at the middle was non-interferent with public output R. So to prove that, most blocks were uh, quite classical for masking, but there were two blocks that were uh, especially, that were new. So uh, data generation and rejection sampling, so RS block here. Uh, for that, uh, we used which, what is called conversion Boolean to arithmetic. Uh, so let's see it on uh, the example of uh, the rejection sampling. So we want to know if Z1 is in RK minus alpha. So actually we want to know if uh, Z1, which is the sum of all the Zi's uh, mod P, mod P uh, is lower than K minus alpha. And this is hard to do with this kind of masking because it's the sum mod, mod p. And it would be uh, easier with a Boolean masking. So we used uh, a, a work from uh, Coron, Grosschild, and uh, Vlana in uh, 2014, uh, which converts uh, an arithmetical masking and gives a Boolean masking. And so we used this to uh, convert it to the Boolean masking to get, uh, to get what we wanted. Uh, so the, to know if it was lower or higher than this value. So finally, uh, here are the performances of our, uh, our work. Uh, so um, we provided an implementation with uh, several orders of masking. Uh, for example, for a number of share, which is two, uh, the algorithm is 15 times slower and uh, uh, it gets uh, higher and higher. And for example, for, uh, for four shares, um, the, the algorithm takes around 40 seconds. So for now, it's not really practical, but it's quite promising because it was just a, a proof of concept and it can be uh, optimized. So uh, it's proving that masking a lattice-based signature can be done. And uh, so the code of this implementation will, will be published soon. And uh, as I said, there is a margin for uh, improvement of uh, per performances here. So in a nutshell, we provided a provable mask uh, implementation of GLP signature scheme with new techniques uh, for adapted for the fiat framework. And this can be applied directly to Dilithium. And actually, there is an implementation in progress, which will be uh, published soon. And now we, uh, we will study the, how to mask other schemes like Bliss or Dilithium G, uh, which use Gaussians. So uh, we need to find a solution for Gaussians. And also in those schemes, we are not sure that uh, the hash function can be unmasked as in GLP. So here, here is the future work. So thank you for your attention. There are two, two links for the paper and an artic blog article. So when you're masking trials, is that just the number of trials? Like the number of trials it took to yeah, run well, rejection sampling? Because I haven't actually seen anything as to how that would help. It seems like the, I mean, as to how you would use that alone to um, provide an attack versus um, more uh, detail about what's going on and what's actually happening in the trials. Just which number of trials? The number of trials in um, in data generation here? Yeah. Are, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Here it's not matched actually. It's uh, outputted. Oh, all it's right. It's given for free to the attacker. Is it not, it's not masked in any way. So it's just. No, this is not masked. Uh, I guess I'm. All right. So. Okay. It's a, yeah. And so. All right. I misunderstood that. All right. And actually, the number of tries uh, is um, 
is often uh, one with this uh, implementation. So it's, Thanks for the nice talk. So I was wondering, you say that Gaussian sampling make it uh, hard. Is it the sampling itself that make it hard, or the computation of the rejection rates that gets uh, get involved computing transcendental function? Um, actually, those are two two different hard problems. Okay. And for now, we are uh, just looking at how to just generate uh, shares with uh, that sum to uh, something that has the Gaussian distribution. And uh, for now, uh, we thought that we could use uh, Gaussian uh, shares with Gaussian distribution. But actually, since it's a discrete Gaussian, it's different. So uh, for now, uh, we might, might look, look at uh, how to uh, mask um, cumulative uh, tables for this. And this would be a solution, but expensive solution. And for the Gaussian, for the Gaussian reje uh, rejection sampling, uh, for now, we didn't uh, look at that yet. <laughs> Okay, so maybe uh, maybe it will be easier to work with binomial distribution at least yes. for the sampling. Yes, that's but what we. Then the rejection becomes even more mm -hmm. tricky, I guess. That that's what is in this example. <laughs> okay. We have time for more questions. No, I just have uh, one more general question. Maybe uh, do you know about other post quantum? Uh, techniques like code based or isogeny or something like this? Is it easier or harder to mask? Um, uh, no, for multivariate cryptography, for now, there is no, there is no masking. Hash base, I, I don't know. And um, uh, um, for codes, uh, there, were, there were some works uh, that use a, mask, a code word as, as masked, masks, but I don't know if there is a deorder masking for this. Okay, thank you. So let's thank the speaker again.